Yo, what's up guys, back at it. This is XP to Level Up, where I give you the experience that you need to get to the next level in your life. Thanks for tuning back in again. It's getting a little colder outside, this is getting a little colder in here, so I got a sweater on today. But, um, so, great topic to talk about today. Um, I think this is going to be very helpful. I, I know I say that for almost every video, but that's because all these topics are very helpful. So, um, tonight guys, I'm going to be telling you, um, I'm going to be talking directly, um, mostly to you young people out there, you know, early 20s, mid 20s, that are looking about, you know, or even, you know, younger than 20s, you know, 18, 19, whatever. But this is for your young people that are looking to um, get their own place soon, that are looking to you know, leave the nest, move out of mom and dad's, or move out of whatever situation that they're in now, and get their own place on their own. Um, which, by the way, if you are thinking about that, that's awesome. Um, trust me, it's very gratifying. It's an incredible experience. I've been living by myself now for... A few months and it is absolutely incredible it's a level of freedom that you can't have um, in any other way and it's definitely a great move but it is wise to be wise about doing it um, it's definitely not something that you should do impulsively um, it's something that you should plan for uh, prepare for and thus it'll you, you know you'll make it a lot easier on yourself and I, I just thought that I talked to you young people out there about some ways that will make it easier for you to live, uh, or I'm sorry, to get your own place on your own. And so you don't have to deal with a lot of the issues that I feel like a, a lot of young people face just because they don't know any better. Um, you know, especially if you don't have, you know, the most guidance from people in your family, you know, or from people around you and you're just kind of doing it on your own, you know, your own whim uh, on your own, um, you know, impulses and endeavors or whatever. But I came up with 10 things, guys, 10 things that I feel like as a young person, you should be aware of when um, moving into your own place. So I've got my notes here just to kind of remind me of what they are. And so, yeah, so let's get started, guys. So the first one, first one is have a savings account built up before you leave. You know, a lot of times when people, you know, I talk to people about living with their parents, you know, a, a lot of times they'll be complaining about it, like, oh man, you know, it sucks. Like, I, like I'm tired of this. Like, I, you know, I want to leave the nest. I, I, I want to get my own place or I want to get a roommate and stuff like that. One of the first things that I tell them is like, okay, well, that's great. But while you're at your parents, you should be saving money as much as possible, especially if your parents aren't charging you any bills. If your parents aren't charging you any rent, if they, you know, if they're paying for your necessities, even like all that kind of stuff. I mean, it, it, to me, that is just the golden ticket to save money and lots of it. Um, I definitely think that that's a great sign of, you know, early discipline is to be able to save all that money that you have when you don't have any bills. Because you could easily spend all your, you know, your little job money that you get from your minimum wage job on, you know, clothes and, you know, what have you that you don't need. But instead, what you could be doing is you could be building for your near future and saving that money. And I strongly, strongly suggest that um, before you consider getting a place on your own, that you have a savings account built up. Why? Because that savings account is going to protect your ass when stuff comes your way that you're not expecting, that you haven't planned for, um, you know, emergencies, um, hidden fees and things. I mean, there are just so many, when, when you're on your own, everything's on you. So it's good to have that safety net of um, your, your income of that savings to protect you in case, you know, something happens. Like, for example, a pandemic, right? pandemic happens, you know, you lose your job and then what, right? So I strongly suggest that you have a savings of at least like $3,000. I think that that's like a minimum that you should have at least $3,000. And this is after you buy all of your furniture and everything, you know, and stuff for your apartment. This is what you should have after everything, like when you sign the lease and you've entered the apartment, this is how much money you should have in your bank account, at least. You know, if, if, if you could have like double that or, you know, even like 10 grand, then great, then you're super set. But at least, at least $3,000, 
um, because I feel like that's going to be, a, a, you know, at, at least enough to to keep you afloat if something happens for at least a, a couple months. Um, so the second thing, guys, is to plan out the furniture that you want a, a, ahead of time and to look for sales. Um, for example, my mattress that I got, um, it's a great mattress and I got it. I moved like a month or so after Memorial Day, but you, but you know how mattresses, um, you know, tend to go on sale on Memorial Day and thus I was able to get a great deal on my mattress and save hundreds of dollars. Same with other things that I have, like other pieces of furniture. I bought a lot of stuff ahead of time when I saw deals on them. So I wouldn't have to, you know, drop huge sums of money on everything at the last second. So I suggest that if you can, if you have enough time between now and your, you know, your move-in date, you know, like a few months or so, try to, excuse me, try to um, buy as many things as cheaply as possible ahead of time. So thus you can kind of, you know, save more money in, in the long run instead of just kind of do like a whole haul last second, you know, because then you're not really looking for, for good deals, good prices. You're just kind of looking to get things, you know, settled because you're so excited for your place that you're not really thinking about the money. And trust me, it, it adds up. It adds up quick. So third thing is to buy necessities first and then decorations, okay? So before you even think about making your place look all pretty and you know, look all nice for your friends and your family and for yourself. Make sure that you buy everything that you need first. I'm talking clean supplies, cooking supplies, furniture, you know, just all the things that you need to, you know, sustain an apartment with, you know, keyword need, right? Not want. I'm not talking about, you know, candles or wall decorations or, you know, fancy pillows or you know, throw blankets or just all that random stuff that's great to have, but it's not necessities, right? You, the, the first thing that you should be getting is necessities and then you start decorating. And once you've, you know, spent as much money as you have on your necessities, you realize where your money's at, then you adjust and then you can get the decorations when you know that you can afford it. You know, if you get a bunch of stuff to, to, to decorate your apartment with, but you don't have necessities. I mean, I feel like you're just going to feel pretty stupid going into your apartment that looks pretty, but it's not functional, right? So, so make sure that you do that. Um, number four, guys, is to only buy appliances that you can see yourself using often, if not every day. Um, I think that, you know, the excitement of, of getting a new place to live, whether that's alone or even with somebody else, just in general, getting a new place, there's always that, that upgrade that, that you want to get that, that appliance that you feel like, you, you know, you would like and stuff like that. But I think it's essential to, to really think about like, okay, if, if I were to buy, for example, like a, a Keurig, okay. Or like an espresso machine, like, do I drink coffee every day? right? Do I enjoy coffee that much, right? Or like if if I get a blender, okay, do I have, you know, blender recipes that I'm going to use frequently to make it worth buying, right? Now, granted, these aren't that, you know, expensive products, you know, they're only like, you know, a couple hundred dollars max, but still, I mean, that couple hundred dollars during the the moving phase could go to something better if you don't need the, um, you know, the appliance. Because like I said, you know, um, you really want to be smart with your money when you're moving in because moving is expensive. It's always more expensive than you think it's going to be too. So if you can, you know, place that $200 somewhere else that's more effective, do that. Um, so number five guys is to minimize your belongings prior to the move. Okay. Um, I think we can all agree that, you know, moving with less stuff is easier than moving with more stuff. Um, and I think that, Um, most of the time, especially, you know, if you're going to be getting your own place and it's your first place, a lot of times it's, it's either going to be a studio or or a one bedroom. And and a lot of times a studio and and one bedroom aren't that big, right? So you don't want to have, you know, let's say you've got all this stuff from your, (laughs) you know, from your, that, that that's at your parents' place, you know, just all this childhood, like memorabilia, all these clothes, all this and that. Just stuff that's just you build up over the years just by existing, right? I feel like you should really take some time and really go through and organize and minimize your belongings so when you move, you have exactly what you want and need 
and nothing more because then it's going to be a lot easier to keep your place clean and decluttered and organized when you don't have so much stuff to worry about. Okay, so big tip there. Um, so n number six, but you know this is probably pretty obvious, but but I'll still say it anyway. But make sure that you take off time of you know from work or if you don't have a job or if you're self-employed or whatever, just make sure that you free up the days entirely to move because moving is more exhausting than you think and um, it's, it's a whole process um, and you just wanna make sure that you have time to do it and then you have the day off the next day to rest, you know, recover and unpack and all that stuff like that. So you, you don't wanna try to move and then have to work the next day in the morning or move and work that night or just something ridiculous. You don't wanna do that. If you have to, I get that. You gotta do what you gotta do. But if you can avoid it, I would suggest that you take time off of work to get to moving. Um, so number seven, guys, is to plan to eat all of um, your food in your kitchen that's yours prior to the move. Um, just because Moving um, re like refrigerated and frozen goods is tedious. Um, it, it's a lot easier to not have to worry about food, with, you know, or especially cold items. Dry goods is not that difficult because you know it's dry. You don't have to worry about really spoiling it quickly or not, or keeping the temperature. But with refrigerated and frozen goods, I feel like it's best if you can try to minimize those as much as possible. That way, you don't have to deal with you know something getting spoiled on the ride or something getting damaged or just anything like that. So. Uh, cold goods, you know, refrigerated, frozen, and you know, produce, soft goods, things that can get damaged in transit easily. I mean, just 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 try to rid yourself of those. And, and, and whatever you do, try not to go grocery shopping the day of the move. Wait until you get everything moved in, and then go grocery shopping for your apartment. Don't try to do it like the day before and bring all the groceries to your apartment. Trust me, it's not going to work out in your favor. Um, so number eight, guys, is create a budget and understand all of your bills prior to the move. Now this kind of goes back to the, the, um, the first tip, but yeah, like I said, managing your money on your own is so important. When you, especially if you have no experience prior, if, if like I said, if your parents have been paying for, you, you know, paying your way, um, you know, and you've been, you know, just kind of living carefree when it comes to money, you really, really got to understand that once you move out on your own, uh, uh, unless your parents are, you know, protecting your ass or whatever, right? Which I'm sure that a lot of parents do for their kids, you know, with their first time moving out, they're probably there for them, you know, if they need help. But if you're like me and you don't have any help in your family, you don't have nothing like that, you know, everything is on you, right? So it's like you really have to um, understand that and take it seriously and um you know, learn how to budget your money, learn uh, exactly what kind of bills that you're gonna be paying f for this place that you're gonna live at, um, and just, you know, calculate everything, make sure that you're making enough money to even do it in the first place. Um, you know, one key thing is you wanna make sure that your living expenses are about, like I'd say about a quarter of your total income. I think that's the safest route is to have your living expenses, that's your rent, your t uh, utilities, and stuff like that, being about a quarter of your income, if not less. Um, I think that that's um, great for people that are just moving out, young people, because, see, when you're living with your parents, you're, you, you get really accustomed to not having the fear of losing your place, right? Because it's your parents' place, right? You're not worried about losing it because you know that, that your parents have money or your parents have a job or whatever and they've got it covered, right? You're not sitting here anxiously thinking about like, okay, hopefully we can live here next month or hopefully, you know, my parents can make the bills or whatever like that. Some people do worry about that, but a majority of the time when you're like in your teenage years or your, you know, your childhood years, you're not thinking about if you're going to make it make if your parents are going to make bills the next month or something like that right a, a, a lot of times you're mentally conditioned to not really worry about those things because they're not your responsibility yet right but once you move in to your own place and everything's in your name you know and mommy and daddy's not there to save you anymore you really have to be on top of your your sorry about that <laughs> For some reason, my laptop wanted to just play music randomly. But anyway, um, I don't own the copyrights to that music, by the way, so don't flag me, YouTube. But anyway, um, 
so what was I saying? Oh yeah. So just make sure that you are on top of your finances when you're moving out. Cause if not, it's really going to bite you in the ass. And one of the worst things that, that, that you can do to yourself is to go and try to live on your own, fail, and then go back to your parents. I mean, that's a humiliating, humiliating feeling. So yeah, so make sure that you are on top of your money. So um, number nine is to read your lease, okay? Again, this, this may sound obvious, but I feel like a lot of people you know, just like how, you know, you get that, those terms of service things when you, you know, purchase a product or something, or you purchase a subscription or something, and there's the terms of service that nobody ever reads. When it comes to your lease, you want to make sure that you read it. And if you don't understand it, you want to make sure you have somebody with you that understands a lease. So you know what you're getting yourself into. I feel like a lot of times, especially, you know, if your budget is, is limited and you don't have like a lot of money to spend on a place, but like a lot of times you can get finessed by um, landlords in a lot of ways if you don't read your lease. And then once you sign that lease, there's nothing you can do about that. So I highly, highly, highly suggest that you take the time to look through your lease, thoroughly understand it, know exactly what you're getting yourself into. So when you sign it, you're, you know, there's no um, fine print that you didn't read or some kind of thing that you don't like that ends up ruining your stay and making it miserable for you. So make sure that you read your lease and understand it. So, and then finally guys, the 10th thing is that when you do move in, make sure that you get a personal copy of the apartment inspection um, upon moving, just to make sure that when you do move out that you have that on file so if they try to say, you know, oh, you did this or you did that, that you can prove them wrong because you have that personal copy. M most of the time, apartments aren't going to be shady like that. They're going to be on top of it themselves and, and keep their own copies. But just to be safe, I feel like it's smart to keep your own personal copy of an apartment. Uh, um, what do you call it? Yeah, an apartment s uh, security deposit inspection or whatever. Um, you just want to make sure that when you come like into the apartment and you see something that's messed up, you record it. And once you recorded everything, you jot everything down that you, um, keep a, a personal copy. But yeah, besides that guys, that is about it. Um, there's probably more tips that, that, that I could come up with for you, but I feel like, um, they're kind of more miscellaneous things. They're not very, um, specific, but I feel like these 10 things are very um, essential to the young person trying to get their own place because if you don't follow these rules, it's very easy to make it a lot harder on yourself than it needs to be. So thank you so much for watching. If you learned something today, make sure to leave a like. Comment below if you have any tips for the people on um, you know, moving out on your own for the first time. Uh, make sure to share this video, show your friends, especially if they're about to move into their own place. And make sure to turn on that notification bell so you don't ever miss an upload. But again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next episode.